this week. Amazing. All right. People might have missed the reference to this from Waiting Room. It's <laughs> like, what you is think? going on? Yeah. <laughs> That's a I, very I, like eight hours later. Room. I just looked up yeah. to toss us all the cursed shoe bit again. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. Uh, it's better left unacknowledged, but well. Standings. Sorry. After week seven. <laughs> <laughs> it was a really interesting week. 100 Thieves had so much turmoil. Change coaches. The meme now is Nuke Chuck is just saying, just win lol, and they're winning, so coach of the year. But they're at seven and eight, currently actually tied for fifth with COG and TSM, which is a crazy development because previously it was that tie for six. COG has fallen from grace. They were seven and six before the weekend. Now they move to seven or eight. And Golden Guardians, they clutched it out. Looking so good. despite Zven's smear campaign on Golden Guardians. Not believing in them. They did win yet again, so let's start talking about that. All right, you want to start with Golden Guardians? Yeah. I uh, I was somewhat on the smear campaign as well, I guess. I initially bought in really hot during the win streak, you know, for narrative fun, but then uh, they had that kind of stumble, and I think I even predicted TSM to beat them today. That yeah. Did, that I, did I, not age well. I also predicted TSM to beat them today. In, in talking to Huhi, I thought it was really interesting that he did talk about wanting to work on their communication, where previously that was kind of a strength that we pointed out, where it was like, you know, Huhi... Gory and River really, really taking control of their early game. The other interesting thing was they didn't practice this composition, which makes it more impressive that they were, uh, you know, attentive enough to pull it off in this game. Because I do think this kind of composition, even when it does get ahead, can go very wrong if you don't protect your flanks, if you don't have good setups. Uh, and they seem to communicate those really well. Yeah, it was a, a bit of a weird draft where you have, you know, the Elise first pick into both your solo laners. Like, just... It, it, it's mm -hmm. not so shocking to me yeah. to hear that this was not like super pre-planned and they were just uh, reacting. But I think that's also a skill set you'll need heading into playoffs because, you know, things suddenly rise in priority or you get these weird drafts and best of fives and being able to still end up with a cohesive team comp that you can pilot is, is a skill in and of itself. I do want to check quickly who Golden Guardians plays in the final week because they are very solidly in fourth place at the moment. Then they have COD, FlyQuest, and Dignitas. So they're probably getting 10. They're probably getting yeah. 10 wins. They win yeah. one of those games. They they might actually get to 11. Like, if you're Golden Guardians, you'd say probably get to 11. Why not 12? FlyQuest looking looking a little sussy this week. <laughs> there you go. Uh, but four, four is very important because that means you get double elimination in yeah. the playoffs. So, currently, they didn't get cursed. Like, I was a little worried with the dive episode of Stick saying Licorice, talking about like, oh yeah, when I was on a bad team, it wasn't working. Now that I'm on a good team, right? And then to just crater immediately afterwards. But it's really nice to watch them actually having the best regular split in their organization's history so far. Yeah, I mean, yeah. just the way Gory played Jace was impressive. You know, there's an NA Jace meme and it's like, okay, you're still KR Jace. You're still KR Jace <laughs> with the hammer form engages and stuff like that. Let's talk about 100 Thieves. Yeah. They're back. They are. I think. Uh, I think they, they did beat Dignitas. 13 of 15 teams have beaten Dignitas, but they also beat Golden Guardians on their first game, and now their upcoming schedule, you think they're going to win that Immortals game, which is moving to eight. TSM and EG are both up in the air, so right in the playoff race, in big part because of the 2-0 they had this week. Yeah, and I think the big thing, I know Bjergsen said it and Closer said it, is their early game, right? And like their early game communication. So not only just their drafting, but really working on getting those early game leads. Because even previously, we talked about this here where we were like, oh, you know, when they have a lead, even if they play it out like really molasses like slowly, they do usually close out their games, right? So then it was just a matter of, um, obviously the, the three losing lanes from last week became a meme, but it was a matter of finding ways to get specifically closer involved in their early game and i think that was a massive part of their success in both of their wins this week yeah i mean they have another huge game on wednesday against tsm super yep. week wednesday that is, that's a big one tsm lost this one to potentially grab fourth place now if they're not able to hang on tsm might slip out of playoffs so that is just a massive game uh and i think with how good hundred thieves looked this weekend mm -hmm. it's it's a lot easier to, to start believing in them. There you can see for TSM side. May not drop out of playoffs because they do have that Dignitas game. A lot of these teams are playing Dignitas on the final yeah. week. Spoilers. <laughs> Spoilers. Yeah, I, I think it's good for the league, 100 Thieves wins. There's just so many double-lifted Bjergsen fans, honestly. 
classic jet, just <laughs> pandering to the audience. <laughs> it's good. And the last time we were on a team together was TSM back in 2020. And it wasn't quite this bad during the regular season in summer split, but it was very bad. Like they took a long time to ramp up when they went to playoffs. They got swept by the Golden Guardians yep. roster back then. I know this is 2020. It's like three years ago, 915 Ages. days since Bjergsen won an LCS title. But it does have very similar vibes to me. Very, very similar vibes. So if they're able to go on a run, I think they'd actually be a threat in the playoffs. But there's that risk that they just miss playoffs entirely to yeah. me. There's still that risk, but I think if they can take the, the TSM game, they're very well positioned to then win the Dignitas one. Yeah. And then mm -hmm. it, I don't think it even matters because they would be at nine wins, nine and nine. I feel like we're, we're talking about being good enough to get in. Okay, Mark, did we curse the OG? Yep. Yep. Moving on. Okay. <laughs> wow. uh, see you next week. So, no, it was... <laughs> for those of you who don't know, we did a meme segment about CLG's superstitions of whether or not they'd win or lose. And just because CLG is such a superstitious team, we thought it would be funny, uh, but we taped it when they were winning like a couple weeks ago. We aired it before their games this week. Then they literally lose to Dig. Lose again today. Yeah. And now they're, you know, it's, it's pretty tough. It's pretty tough out there. They could, for, they could realistically go 7-11. and 11. That loss to Dig hurts so much because they, ha they had that game in hand and their comp had such a massive scaling advantage with the Aurelian Soul. Today, it was like the opposite, right? Like their comp had to get off or like start snowballing early. And when that didn't happen, you saw someday just literally sitting in front of team oh, fights yeah. and the Callista sinking <laughs> a billion one spears and someday takes no damage. Also, I mean, shout out to to EG for the poppy pick. Um, yeah, yeah. We didn't really have time to talk about it when we were talking through the draft, but that was a really excellent pick into what CLG wanted to do and made a massive impact when Inspired kept visiting bot. Uh, yeah, I mean, CLG just has these games sometimes where I feel like they, they just punt their drafts. Yeah. Uh, they, they're creative too sometimes. Mm -hmm. I, I appreciate yeah. the creativity, but that does lead to the occasional misstep where you look at that draft and you're like, it was how do you win that game? You know, like the Poppy pick was smart, but there's other tank junglers you could have thrown in there potentially to kind of fill that role. Poppy was the best one for just stuffing them actually getting good engages off. They did kill FBI a handful of times in team fights, but they had yeah. to commit like literally everything to kill them. Uh, so yeah, CLG just uh, really looking dangerous here because TL, TL is not a total cakewalk. You know, they that's the worst record mm -hmm. on their three opponents. These are three very difficult opponents compared to the ones that we just saw earlier. Yeah, and I thought... It's difficult to talk about individual players from CLG's game today because their draft just did not work, even at even gold mm -hmm. at all. I did think Contracts probably was a little over-aggressive or misreading fights, but there really wasn't a winnable way to read those fights, kind of no matter what they did. Yeah. So it's tricky. when they Again, when they're at their best, uh, one of their side lanes is dominating, to me. Mm -hmm. Like, it's either... What, like today, today was particularly the weird because Asylum was locked as a third pick, blind pick, definitely going top lane, mm -hmm. and only Aureli was banned from the top lane, and they just go 4-5 and end up having a Cassante into it. It just feels like they're losing a lot of value from a player who can win so many of those lanes, and they've trusted to try and carry the team before. So that's, that's what I don't like. I think they're going to need to recommit to either Dokla trying to take over games with, uh, if, as long as Aureli and Soul is getting banned. Right, so that's how I think they they need to change. It definitely feels like there's a small list of like CLG champs, and once you knock them off that, the, I'm not quite sure what the backup is. And if they can just break those champs free, so you can't just ban a soul in the first phase, you know, if if they have more, just a little bit more to break those free, or the Aurelia or something. Yeah, yeah. I want to talk about the top of the table as well. Cloud Nine tied for first. The first game on Wednesday is going to be the C9 battle. versus Let's FlyQuest go. for first. Pretty interesting, too, because first, looking like it's going to match up against four at the start of the playoffs, Zven would definitely like to play Golden Guardians in the he first round of the playoffs. He said he was terrified of EG. He yeah. said <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's not mic'd up, but he's definitely back there if, if he's able to do it, if he's peanut gallering us. But, okay, uh, I'm really... I, I was gushing about MNS. I don't know if I'm like the MNS propaganda machine now because he was like dodging a rupture and you and me were talking to Kobe, like, look at his movement. He's so good. <laughs> oh, yeah. He's not Kobe was not match. a believer for some reason. He just wanted to take the like the contrary angle. In fairness, he had like 
this sick sidestep that was earlier in the game Insane before right, yeah. Kobe started watching. Yeah. But yeah, Co Kobe's just, I don't know, man. Co Kobe's <laughs> going to wash this bit back and, and mauled about it. I mean, <laughs> the team is just looking super, super good. Yeah. So the thing that I was impressed with the most, and I was talking to you guys about this during the game, uh, I might be starting my Blabber propaganda MVP campaign. I haven't done enough research, but we'll see. It, but I'm just impressed because this is actually just objectively a weaker jungle meta than in the past, mm -hmm. where farming is less rewarded. Counter jungling less. Counter jungling not as possible. So it's harder to show your superiority over other junglers. And Blabber still just looks great. It doesn't feel like he's taken a step back where I've seen so many other junglers need to struggle. So I'm just, I'm just really impressed by what he's been able to do in his 15 games so far this spring. I think the biggest thing about Blabbers, when you look at his pathing, it's so scarily efficient. Like, he's one of the only junglers that still bothers to counter jungle. Just, like, if he has pressure from his lanes, he's in your jungle. He is harassing you or he's taking your camps. Um, and with counter jungling having been nerfed so hard, that's not something that a lot of junglers do. They might just try to visit their lanes instead. But Blabber is so, like again, sneakily efficient about mm -hmm. what he does early. So you'll look down and suddenly he will have like a level lead and a 20 farm lead. And you're just like, where did this come from? Like, I didn't see him do anything extraordinary, but he's just, again, so sneaky about it. And then he shows up to fights and he's bigger, he's stronger. His positioning's really good. Um, and if he has to go to his lanes, he will. Yeah, they're, they're a triple threat team. Feels like all of the teams at the top of the table are pretty stacked across the board mm, where like West, you got impact vicla prince when they're popping everything yeah even working. spico he's mostly been on tank duty but there's no doubt that he can play the more bruiser carry oriented meta mm -hmm. that's actually what he made his name on so like yeah. it's not like if there's a meta shift suddenly speak is going to drop out you know like it's it's a case where i feel like the top three eg is is had a rocky or regular season but i don't think there's any doubt in their like top end if, yeah. they're, if they're functioning well. And if they get into a 2-3 matchup, it's still a best of five and they won't have side select for the first game and that's like their only disadvantage. Oh no. Yeah, ooh. Yeah. MasterCard Player of the Week. It's between Closer and m and MNS. It is. Dun, dun, dun. m and m and Absolutely popped off and the two wins this week for them versus EG and TL. Uh, not like the most insane KDA score lines like we've seen from some 80 carries this split, but in terms of game impact, if you go back and rewatch these, uh, very, very, very good. The counterpick Trindamir yesterday absolutely mm -hmm. slapping down than the Syndra today. Yeah, I, I do want to give an extra shout out to his Syndra because his positioning in a lot of these fights really made it so that they could not do anything because he was just constantly threatening to, you know, 100 to zero someone. This yeah. is the turn to mirror game, though. Three he, he just, solo kills yeah. <laughs> in that one. But I would say the Cinder game, his movement, and then also just how much presence he had in mm -hmm. every team fight. Like, I, I, I hope, I'm hoping we have it in this in this role. The part no, where don't. he's like just positioning yeah, there's at, one in, the in mid lane. river. Yeah, or not in river, in the uh, top side jungle. Well, and I think like, though, he hasn't played the enough games for me to probably give him like the first all pro nod because he didn't come into the second round robin basically. Yeah. There's a case to be made that he's actually the best performing mid laner in the games that or like the time frame that he's been in the LCS. Yeah. yeah. There's a legitimate case that he Absolutely. could be your, your all pro. And like I would disagree based off my own metrics, but like right. if someone else put him there, I wouldn't be like, oh no. It's super exciting. And and the last thing I'll say about this is it just does feel like Cloud9 has found a much better groove with his ability to win lane and everyone just playing very aggressive and up tempo yeah. in the same way that when they went on their run at the end of summer last split of like Jensen playing control mages, uh, Berserker playing hyper carries and Zven playing enchanter bots. That worked, right? They were very efficient at that. And it looks like it's a much different style, but they're very efficient at it now, just kind of winning all their lanes. So want to track that going forward. Congratulations to MNS for player of the week. And next week, it's a super week. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, but Wednesday, Cloud9 versus FlyQuest, Golden Garden oh versus COG, yeah. Hunter Thieves versus TSM. These first Those three first games. three games are oh, awesome. TL versus Dignitas at the end and ED versus Immortals for the fourth game. Bangers across the board. Yeah, those first three games. I hope you were watching enough to know that it starts on a Wednesday. Otherwise, you're gonna miss out on some really awesome games. Just a reminder, 
that the LEC spring split starts tomorrow at 9 a.m. Pacific because they did a winter split and now it's a spring split. Uh, noon Eastern and NACL playoffs kick off at 1 p.m. Pacific for Eastern. Check it out if you want. But most importantly, Wednesday here, Azale is really, really tall. He's actually ridiculously tall. Yeah. Oh, is that not the goodbye? They just decided to shoot yeah. it from it other angles. It came back to us. I was, I was demiking. I'm done. Yeah. We are done. Bye.